Declare the glory of the Lord among all the nations and the wonders of the Lord among all peoples. Good morning. Welcome to Northmont Presbyterian Church as you worship with us this morning. I pray that you feel a touch of the Holy Spirit upon your life. I'd like to thank the Pittsburgh Boy Choir for being here this morning and for helping us to lead in worship. And I welcome the Pittsburgh Boy Choir families. I hope you feel at home here this morning. And please feel free to take pictures of your beautiful children because you should. A couple of announcements. Confirmation class and youth class will not be meeting today. If you absolutely must meet, let me know and we'll do something unscheduled with you. But something makes me think that you're not here anyway, so I'm talking to the air. A special, special thank you to all of you who helped organize and donated cookies for our combined four church Thanksgiving Eve service this past Wednesday. It was chuck-a-block full, thanks to you. The table was abounding, and we even sent cookies home, and then maybe froze a couple of extras. It was a wonderful service, and I thank you for your support. Next week, for you Northmonters, we're going to do something very different. It is the first Sunday of Advent, and we will have a hog service. I mean, hanging of the greens service. It will be an interactive celebration identifying why we have this, that, and the other things. Music and worship will be leading the hanging of the multiple things, but we could use your help. This is the one service where sitting down is not encouraged. If you need to say sitting, please do. There are hymns for you to sing, and we will need your help. But if you feel so inclined to help the garlands be put in place or the wreaths to be put in place or the, the ornaments on the tree to be put in place, the chrismon tree, you are invited to move around. We'll probably not do a great deal of talking because during each of the elements that we put up, there's going to be a scripture reading and there's going to be a little narrative explaining why it is we have this decoration in church. Church is not a place that we just put things because it's pretty. We put things here for a reason and for a meaning. And that meaning is always going to be the bottom line to the glory of God. So heads up, I could use a couple of more readers. I need about five more. You would just come up and either stand here or stand here, read a scripture that I have written for you, and read a brief definition that I have written for you. If you would like and be willing to do this, Bill Paul, I could really use your help, honestly, I could. Um, others as well, please, and if that you would not mind. And then again, I'm gonna warn you again, we'll be moving around. And if you cannot, you stay put. You'll be fluffing bows. Also coming up during December, our Advent family nights on Wednesdays. There are three Wednesdays in Advent, and on each of those three Wednesdays, we will have three different Bible studies, one for elementary, one for youth, one for adults, and you can choose which you are. We'll also have crafts downstairs. And I need to thank those wonderful nitwits who on Wednesday spent their free day and cut out the felt pieces that we will need to make the nativity set that you can see in the narthex. Without your help, my hands would be extremely sore. So thank you very, very much. The deacons are hosting a toy drive. If you did not get the bulletin about this last week, I made some photocopies of the bulletins that are around the church. They're in the narthex. If you would like to pick up that list, uh, these are just suggestions of toys that you can purchase for the deacons' um, giving time that they will do so that parents can, quote unquote, shop something for their child from the gifts that you bring. Produce to people, correct? Produce to people will be held, our, this will be our second time, will be held on December 10, correct? 16th, thank you, it's Saturday the 16th from 9 o'clock to noon. 
and there we will have fresh produce and other kinds of goods, food that can be boxed and then will be passed out. We need to help box. Last time you did what, 400 boxes? 40,000 pounds of food? You figure out the number of boxes then. If you would like to sign up to help us with this family mission trip, the sign-up sheet is also up, up front. Any other announcements that I should highlight? Then let us turn our hearts and our minds to the praise of our God by standing and sharing the love of Christ with one another. Good morning. Please stand if you're able to join in the call to worship. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into God's presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is he that has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. God's steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. Please join me in the prayer of invocation. God of rapidly moving times, of holidays and gatherings, of sadness and loneliness, be with us this day as we gather to offer you praise in thanksgiving for the many ways you have touched our lives. We open our hearts to your stirring, healing words of love, words of all creation. We praise you for the bounty which surrounds us and for our time together. Be in our worship and be in our hearts as we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
Please be seated. Will you join me in the prayer of confession? We confess that we have got caught up in the secular reason for the season, which is to buy and spend. Slow us down, Lord. On this week after Thanksgiving, let us put aside our rush to Christmas and offer our prayers of gratitude for your constant care. Help us turn once again to you, songs and spirits of praise. You have blessed us with the work to be done, harvest to be gathered in, and people with whom to share our bounty. Help us to reach out to our friends and neighbors and to those whom we have called strangers. Remind us that the harvest is given to be shared and not hoarded. Open our hearts in actions of gratitude that we may truly offer our praise and thanksgiving to you. No matter how lonely we may feel, God is with us. God's loving care surrounds each and every one of us. Feel the power of God's love in you and be at peace. Thanks be to God. Amen. the children come down for time with the children please happy new year happy new year right nope happy new year do you know why no, here, have, have a, go ahead. They, I don't even know what they're called. What are they called? Here, sweetheart, do you want one? Are you wondering why I said Happy New Year? <laughs> Does anybody know? Today is the last day, or the last Sunday, of the church calendar. Next week starts the new calendar, which is what? Does anybody know what next week is? What? December, but what's the word? Advent. Do you know what Advent is a time when we start to what? Prepare our hearts for the Lord being born. For the Lord being born. So what I have today is I was going to show you specific colors that we use at different times of the year. I thought it would be cool to tell you about this because I never knew about it. So I'm going to give you each one of these. Okay. I will give you purple. You want to put it on? You can stand up if you want. (laughs) Blue. Okay, so purple, you want to stand up? Purple is to remind us that God is in control over everything. Sometimes the color blue is also used during Advent. Blue reminds us about Christ, and we call him day spring. It's the source of the day. And blue can also be used to remind us of the waiting with Mary for the Christ child. How about purple again? 
That's for Lent. Do you know what Lent is? Easter, right. It's the time we prepare our hearts to get ready. And we study and look at um, how we are all disciples of Christ. It's also 40 days. Any other reason we, sell, or we talk about 40 days? You guys know this? 40 days in the desert, right? Jesus in the wilderness. And 40 years for the people of God to get to their holy place. Okay, you can sit back down. How about white? White represents different times, um, like after Jesus is born for Epiphany, or Easter to represent that he rose from the dead. We also use it on certain days like All Saints Day and Christ the King Day. And when you think of, when you see white, think of joy, because that's pretty much what that means. Okay, you can sit down, white. How about red? Do you guys know what red is for? Do you ever see the color red in the church? Hmm, does this remind you of anything? Not turkey. <laughs> How about Pentecost? When the Holy Spirit came down like fire on their head. Okay, you can sit down. And how about green, Mom? <laughs> green is ordinary time. It reminds us. Um, it's a growing time for us. And it's the time that we really spread the news about Jesus to all the people. So there you have it, all the colors of the church calendar. And if you look around at the church, like, see up there, what color's there right now? What, not, what color's right there on the communion table? And look at Pastor Jane. What color is that? Green. So do you remember what that is? Ordinary time. What color do you think there'll be next week for Advent? Blue or purple? It'll probably be purple. Okay. You do? Yep, there's more green. That's right. Good job. Okay, can we say a prayer? I'll pray over you, okay? Father, we thank you for all these wonderful days to celebrate you and your awesome ways, for loving us and never leaving our side. We look forward to the Advent season as we prepare our hearts and minds for your coming. Thank you, Father. We pray all of this in your Son's name. Amen. Hey, you guys, don't forget to get your worship bags out in the north.
The first reading today is from Ezekiel 34, verses 11 to 16. You can find it in your Red Pew Bible on page 803. For thus says the Lord God, I myself will search for my sheep. I will seek them out. As shepherds seek out their flocks when they are among their scattered sheep, so will I seek out my sheep. I will rescue them from all places to which they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries and will bring them into their own land. And I will feed them on the mountains of Israel by the water courses and in all the inhabited parts of the land. I will feed them with good pasture and the mountain heights of Israel shall be their pasture. There they shall lie down in good grazing land and they shall feed on rich pastures on the mountain of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep and I will make them lie down, says the Lord God. I will seek the lost and I will bring back the strayed and I will bind up the injured and I will strengthen the weak, but the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them with justice. Our second reading comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 25, verses 31 to 40. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate the people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats, and he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at his left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, come you that are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer him, truly I tell you, just as you did it for one of the least of these You are members of my family. You did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, you that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you did not welcome me. Naked and you did not give me clothing. Sick and in prison and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick and did not take care of you? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. These are our questions too, Lord. When was it that we saw you and did not give you praise and glory? Lord, open your word to our hearts that we may see your amazing shepherd-like love for we, your people, all people. In your holy name we pray. Amen. I think it is fair to say that no one wants to be a goat. Based on this final paragraph of Jesus in Matthew, I am certain 
nobody here will volunteer to be the goats. Matthew knows no one wants to be a goat from this particular story, and that is the point of this parable. There is no reason for you to be a goat. I expect Jesus had no qualms about goats, their nature, their meat, their milk. His point was simple and direct. Someday, all nations, all people, will meet God face to face. When that happens, it will be the Son of Man who will be reigning in glory, sorting goats and sheep, hypothetically, because we will not be either goats or sheep. The animals will not be included in this particular one. This is just for people. As Jesus shared this image with his disciples, I think they became distractive, distracted with this goat and sheep division. Like most of us, they were thinking about themselves. Hold the phone. Am I a sheep or a goat in this parable? And that progressed to, are you a sheep or a goat? Oh, Jesus, would you like my personal opinion on whether you are a sheep? or a goat. I could help you make that distinction. All of a sudden it became, I'm righteous and who might not be righteous. Jesus does not need any help sorting through the ones whom he loves. Nobody wants to be a loser, yet people are too quick to name other people losers, or in this case, goats. Present company Accepted, of course. There wouldn't be a judgmental person in this room, I'm quite sure. If you do not want to be a, lo a loser, in this case, a goat, then look for Jesus where you least expect him to be. And then expect to see him. Expect to find Jesus with and in someone in a tight spot, someplace you least expect to find Jesus, because therein is Jesus's history among us, right where we least expect him. David Lose in his liturgical commentary writes, no one expects to see Jesus in the face of the disadvantaged, the poor, the imprisoned, and all who are in need. And perhaps that is just what Jesus is trying to teach us. Expect to find me there. When we think of God, we typically think in terms of power, might, royalty, glory. Indeed, the parable begins by describing the Son of Man in heavenly glory. He who sits on the throne attended by angels, seems to reinforce this preconception of God separate, apart, disconnected, aloof. We t typically think of God in ultimate terms, all-knowing, all-powerful, all-just, and so, and so on. But what about Christ on high as all-compassionate? even to goats. This parable is meant to be a glimpse of a metaphorical future. One that asks the question, would you like to be a goat or a sheep? And quickly we all raise our hands, we would like to be a sheep, thank you very much. In this story, both the goats and the sheep were surprised when Jesus said, when I was hungry, you gave me food. When I was thirsty, you gave me something to drink. When I was a stranger, you welcomed me. When I was naked, you gave me clothes. Both groups, sheep and goats alike, replied, We did? <clears throat> when? When did we do that, Jesus? Can you imagine the goats and the sheep looking across at each other? Did you do that? Did you do that? I don't remember doing that. When exactly did we ever see you 
hungry or thirsty, vulnerable or unwelcomed Jesus. This parable lets us glimpse the future before the future even happens. It is as if our Lord were telling us these things, compassion, mercy, acceptance, these things mean a great deal to me. So there is no reason to wait until you see me in glory before you begin practicing these simple acts of my abiding shepherd-like love. Christ all compassion and mercy is the silver lining in this parable. He is presence where the goats and the sheep reside. This is the imagery of Christ the King, the last day of our liturgical year, Happy New Year to all of you. Barb said it to the kids, but not to the, to the congregation. Happy New Year, all. He who reigns in glory and among the sheep and the goats. That is what we celebrate on this day that we look back through the entire liturgical year and say, where did we see the Lord? You will see God among the sheep and the goats. And this is how our liturgical year ends, with the shepherd gathering the flock, once scattered, once hungry, lost. Sheep are gathered again and fed by the presence and the rest of our loving shepherd. Maybe this is the best way to end our year, remembering that though human beings may perpetually be sheep, and admittedly we all turn into goats every now and then, God has promised to be our shepherd. This promise to be present in all of our animal nature ways is part of God's hesed. Hesed is the Hebrew word that I'm not pronouncing correctly because it has this really harsh, throaty H-C-H that would probably break the microphone, so I'll just leave it alone in its English transliteration. Hesed. Hesed is translated in the Old Testament as loving kindness, mercy, goodness, great kindness, God's favor, kindly deeds. Hesed is the word for God's steadfast love, persistent loyalty to sheep and goats. Hesed is the word of covenant, that mutual promise initiated by the strong, that clearly is God, the shepherd, and the weak, the sheep. The sheep are weak. We are followers. And in order to follow, what do we need? A shepherd. God, the good shepherd, reaches out with said towards his sheep. This steady, persistent refusal, refusal of God to wash his hands of ornery sheep, wayward sheep, including sheep that kind of look and act like goats, is the essential meaning of the Hebrew word hesed, steadfast, unchanging, tenacious love. I would like to compare God's hesed from the Old Testament to the scene Jesus gives in this parable. God's hesed is that sure love which will not let Israel go. Not all of Israel's persistent waywardness through the Old Testament stories could destroy God's steadfast love. The story of Noah and the ark. The story of God saying, I think I need to destroy these people. And God realizing, oh no, I do not. This is who they are, and I will protect them. I will covenant to be with them. I know who they are. Continual waywardness does not block God's said. God refuses to ostracize us, sheep and goats, but instead shows us God's unchanging, all-powerful, relentless compassion, mercy, loving kindness, and praise God, forgiveness. All of a sudden, being a goat does not look so bad. 
The confirmation class is jogging through scripture and right now we've just finished covenant and now we're moving into law. Law as in here are the best ways to live, to recognize, and to see, and to remember God's compassionate mercy, ever present. The crown of Christ is not a diadem. It is a shepherd's staff, that tool for protecting sheep, for rescuing sheep. We will sing, crown him with many crowns, the lamb upon his throne. And this is the very best definition of God's chesed. The Holy One of Israel identifies himself as a what? Sheep, a lamb, vulnerable, yet all powerful, the unfailing love of a people whom he chooses to love is his main characteristic, the lamb. This is our savior. This is Christ, the king. This is the reign of Christ called a lamb. This is a beginning. This new year as of next week, we begin with a savior who identifies with us in every way. Author John Bell writes, we can be honest about sheeps and goats and still envision God's love to be bigger, stronger, and more compelling than the reality of any of our shortcomings. Tenacious solidarity, Old Testament scholar Walter Brueggemann says God is in Tenacious solidarity with you, with us, with Israel in the Old Testament. We are called to be, therefore, in tenacious solidarity with God. Vulnerable, all-powerful, who can accept our vulnerabilities. Jesus said the last shall be first, and the first shall be last. The one with tenacious solidarity is the judge, the king, the decision maker, the lamb. He is also the one submitted, who submitted himself to judgment on the cross. Judgment by a human power and took that judgment and destroyed the power of death. Our sinful failures perish in the fiery love of Jesus, that wonderful red for Pentecost. Jesus who recognizes the face of the hungry, the lonely, the thirsty, the forlorn, the stranger, and the vulnerable in each of us. He asks that we too recognize these elements in each other and in everyone whom we meet. Again, David Lowe says, God in Jesus shows up where we least expect him and overturns our expectations and judgments with God's unfailing mercy and compassion. Might God be surprising us in any time of any day, any day of any week, by showing up where we least expect it. Oh, I'm among the sheep, all is well. Uh-oh, I might be among the goats. Maybe that's not so well. Can't Jesus show up where we least expect it? And on this Christ, the King, the Lamb King, the compassionate King, the king who reigns with mercy and hasad. Might we be surprised where this king of compassion shows up and works through us to show this same compassion to others? Can we imagine God's reign shaped by mercy, shaped? by Hassad, instead of shaped by power and 
defining right and defining wrong? Shouldn't our practices be God's love reshaped by mercy that includes those we might just call wrong? Any chance we could also call those whom we might call wrong? Could we call them sheep instead? The reign of Christ in our lives gives us that hope and that ability. To God be the glory. Amen. Please be seated. As we come together in prayer, if there are new situations or people that you would like named in prayer, please say their name, that we may rejoice with you and cry with you. I'll close us in prayer. Let us pray. We come with songs of joy, songs of service, songs of praise, dear Lord. We come with thanksgiving, seeking you this day. May living in thanks become real in our daily lives, not just once a year. May our lives become thanks living living each day in gratitude for all that you have done and continue to do in and through your people. May our thanks living show the love and has said of Christ to everyone we meet. 
Lord, remember Priscilla, Becky. We pray for Becky and Dave, Peggy, Grinauger, Donna, Birdie, Bob, our president, Sarah. Lord, hear our prayers for victims of terror. Especially this week, we pray for the families of the victims of the massacre in the mosque in Egypt. You are the shepherd to the nations. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for Kriti and Tammy, Howard, Dorothea, and her family, Thelma, Will, Dave, Dorothy, Cheryl, Larry, Dwayne and Liz, Jill, Frank, Annette, Kevin, John and Tammy, Betty, Barbara, Bob, Iris, Ralph, Adrian, Pam, Jack, Emmy, the fitting family as they grieve the resurrection birthday of Joanna. We pray for Mia Bacarty for her healing, dear Lord. Hear our prayers for our mission co-workers, the Ludwigs, the Wellers, Kay Day and the congregation in Mangochi, that they may be witnesses to your compassion and mercy. Receive these prayers of your people, Lord, those spoken and those hidden in loving hearts, as we gather our voices together to pray as you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Will the ushers please come forward? As we sang in our hymn, when we reach to others in flood-stricken lands and offer our hearts there and offer our hands, so too do we offer our tithes of gratitude for God's mercy and compassion. Let our offerings begin.
Let's pray. To you be the glory, God, our shepherd. Receive these offerings from your people. May you multiply them and touch lives with compassion and mercy and grow your church. In Jesus' name we pray and all of God's people said, Amen. People of God, do you think we could express our gratitude to the Pittsburgh Boy Choir one more time? And please know, a Stephen Minister is here to pray with you if you would like to bring something in prayer and have a companion with you. And now, people of God, knowing who your King truly is, live with joy. Go in the service of our God and greet all with the love of Christ. Amen. 